What up, everybody? In Power Book 2, Season 3, Tariq was riding with Effie on the way to the crime scene where Effie thought she had killed Lauren and began to confess to Effie about killing Ray Ray and also about killing his father. And during this conversation, he said something very interesting to keep in mind throughout this video. That killing Ray Ray started a cycle of that he can't get out of. And that's the thing about killing somebody that is unlike any other crime. It will haunt you for the rest of your life. For just about all other crimes, I don't know all the details, but for most, there's a statute of limitations. Once you commit the crime and you get away clean, it's over. There's not much that you got to keep worrying about. I mean, nobody's going to go back and investigate who sold drugs to somebody five years ago. But murder is the one crime that a cold case breakthrough could get you caught up 25 years later and going to prison for life as an old man or an old woman for a crime that you thought you got away with. That is why a lot of times, like Tariq said, it started a cycle. And we can see that Malcolm Howard is currently in a similar cycle ever since he found out Kanan was his son and after getting shot by Kanan, trying to cover up who shot him. Howard started off this cycle subtly, making sure that Kanan didn't go down for the bad crack after one of the guys he sold the crack with started snitching. And Marvin ended up killing that guy for snitching. Before this, as far as we knew, Howard was a good cop and respected by everyone at the precinct. When Howard was shot, Sam the crackhead was an eyewitness to the shooting, but was initially too high to tell the cops any kind of relevant information. But after getting arrested, he saw Howard talking to Kanan outside the precinct, and it jogged his memory. And in true base head fashion, he started going crazy in the holding cell and started yelling out that he knew information about Howard's shooting, only for Burke to hear it and try to get a statement from Sam about the shooting. But Sam was released on OR, so Burke wasn't able to get that statement, but used a tactic that she learned from Howard giving Sam some money for information. And Sam told Burke where to find him at, and agreed to give a statement that Kanan shot Howard. But Detective Garcia told Howard what was going on, and Howard told Rock that Sam was a problem. And Rock got Marvin to take him out. When Burke and Howard showed up to the crack house to find Sam dead, Burke immediately suspected that Howard had something to do with it. And Burke kept on pressing and rolled up at Rock at the supermarket and rolled up on Kanan too and was even about to plant some drugs on him and bring him into custody before Kanan knocked her over and ran to Howard's. Getting us to season three. Starting off with Burke getting suspended. And I think that Howard did have a soft spot for Burke. That is why he initially was trying to avoid killing her. Because he told the police captain that he thinks that Burke could be a good cop if she ever got her stuff together. Then Rock and Howard met up and Howard told Rock a key detail. That they were on the same side. But Rock replied that they weren't on the same side, detective. But Howard assured Rock that when it came to Kanan, they were. This is a big change in the dynamic of Rock and Howard's relationship. Because either though Rock has a history of using Howard to do her dirty work by snitching, he has never been on her side. He only used the information that she provided to do his job. He never crossed the line like we've seen him doing ever since he found out that Kanan was his son. Because it seemed like Howard finding out that Kanan is his son gave him something bigger to live for. Before that, it seemed like he was basically living to do his job. He didn't really have any type of relationships outside of his co-workers. So Howard and Rock went to talk to Kanan to show him they were on one accord. When Kanan started pressing Howard about Burke and let Howard know that she is a problem. It was at that time Howard knew what he had to do. And I still question if Howard would have killed Burke if he would have got in that car and she started apologizing for getting into his business 
and saying she was just going to leave his personal life alone and do her job. Keep in mind what Howard told Burke right after he shot her. I told you to keep your mouth shut. This is almost the same thing that Kanan told Jukebox in OG Power after he shot her. How she was always running her mouth. But Burke didn't keep her mouth shut at all. She doubled down on Howard with everything she knew. Then when Burke brought up Howard having Sam killed, he had heard enough and smoked Burke. Only to find out Burke was recording the whole conversation. I figured that Burke was recording this conversation and thought that Howard might take off and leave that recording behind. But Howard handled the whole situation like a G. He made it look like she killed herself and took the gun she had on her side and the tape recorder. So with that said, I definitely think Kanan will learn a lot from Howard. I believe Howard is the one who teaches Kanan how to play chess and to start thinking strategically out in the streets. But I don't think Howard will be the one to recreate himself and become Breeze. Simply because I don't think Breeze is any type of kin to Kanan because he would have been more upset about Ghost killing Breeze. But I still haven't ruled out the possibility at the same time. I think Howard will become more like Jukebox from OG Power, just a straight up dirty cop. Either though I don't think Howard's going to start hitting licks like Jukebox was, Probably more about Howard smoking a bunch of people to keep protecting Kanan as Kanan gets into the drug game. But at the same time, if it ever came down to it and he needs the money or Kanan or Rock is in a bind and needs the money, we could possibly see Howard start hitting licks also, but I doubt it. Keep in mind what OG Kanan said about Howard at the end of the episode. Streets make you do stuff you'd even know you could do. Turn you into somebody you don't even recognize no more. But that's all you. Get at me too. Will there be a fallout from Detective Burke's death? For the most part, I think Howard is going to get away clean. The cops will most likely go with Burke smoking herself and leave it alone. But at the same time, there are a few people who could end up being a problem. Also keep in mind that Burke had a whole file and notes on Howard. This might end up being found by either her girlfriend or her father. Also, did Burke leave behind anything for them to find saying she was meeting up with Howard? So either Burke's ex-girlfriend or her father are ones to keep an eye on. Also, there's a cop I've been suspect of for a minute now named Detective Garcia. He seems to be friends with Howard and he's called Burke an idiot before. But at the same time, he's been around this whole time and in the middle of everything that's going on. Then there's Jukebox, who had a good relationship with Burke after Burke got her out of a couple crimes. One of the reasons why Burke ended up getting suspended in the first place. Juke warned Burke that her own people were coming for her. And Juke also refused to pin Nicole's death or the bad crack on Burke or have any part in setting her up. At the same time, she also knows that Howard is involved in some type of way because she saw him talking to Nicole's dad. And this caused Jukebox to confess to Nicole's dad that Nicole got the bad crack from her. And this could be a problem moving forward. So after getting the news about Burke, Mr. Bingham might start stirring up problems in the precinct next. And if I had to guess who Marvin is going to smoke in episode 2... My guess would be Mr. Bingham. Howard will find out that he's at the precinct blaming Laverne for Nicole's death and put the word out to Rock and Marvin will smoke Mr. Bingham to protect Jukebox. And there you have it. Raising Canaan is back. Leave your thoughts, theories, and predictions in the comments.